Okay, good morning. Uh, I'm Maria Pinali Mongelli. I'm affiliated with the Politecnico di Milano, Department of uh, Architecture, Built Environment, and Construction Engineering. Um, as requested, uh, um, the first slide is a very short presentation of uh, the, uh, my research group, uh, and uh, which is uh, made up of uh, the person listed there, which are uh, assistant professor or research associate or PhD students. We also have some uh, national uh, collaboration mainly with the University of Udine and uh, with IFSTAR where in Paris where I'm actually I'm currently uh, doing my sabbatical. Uh, the research topics of the group related to this uh, working group uh, are uh, focused on vibration based damage localization especially for civil uh, structures that is uh, multi-story buildings and uh, bridges and recently also cultural uh, heritage. Uh, in the last years we have been uh, working on uh, a method for damage localization. Uh, here I will try very uh, quickly to, to give you an idea of, of uh, the, the, the main idea <coughs> on which the method works. The idea is very simple and is that uh, uh, a loss of stiffness, the, the, the method uh, detects losses of uh, stiffness, detects and localizes losses of stiffness. A loss of stiffness will uh, alter locally the deformed shape of, uh, of a structure. Uh, here you can say, see a very uh, simple structure, a cantilever beam, but uh, the concept uh, is the same uh, for a more complex uh, um, structure. And this uh, uh, change in the uh, deformed shape of the structure will make uh, uh, the, the shape uh, irregular at the location of the stiffness loss. So this, uh, the idea is to detect this uh, <coughs> irregularity by fitting the uh, operational shape, the, the shape of the structure uh, with a, a smooth function. We use the spline, a cubic spline function because uh, uh, it has a mathematical, um, mathematical uh, um, characteristic which, which is called the Gibbs phenomenon, uh, which uh, uh, makes uh, um, um, the interpolation very uh, bad, close to a curvature um, a curvature discontinuity. Since the loss of stiffness induces a, a discontinuity of curvature, the interpolation with, with the a, a spline function will become uh, as much worse, as much higher is the uh, stiffness loss. So we define the damage feature as the different, sorry, uh, out to point here. Uh, the damage feature is as the difference between uh, the recorded uh, deformed shape and, uh, uh, and its interpolation with, uh, with the spline function. Uh, we can do this in terms of the total deformed shape or we can do this uh, uh, in terms of operational deformed shapes. That is for each value of frequency if we work in the frequency domain. So here are some very nice uh, operational shapes uh, calculated for a numerical model. And uh, uh, for each of these, we can uh, uh, calculate this error. And in order to have uh, one value of the error for each location, we can sum up the errors for all the operational shapes in the frequency range of, of interest. So this is the basic idea of the method uh, and the, 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 the presentation of the damage feature. The problem is that, of course, this damage feature will exhibit variations even if there is no damage at all. And this is due to some uh, random sources, the usual random sources. So usually we may have uh, three situations. Yesterday someone talked about, uh, said that there are mainly three uh, types of monitoring, short, periodical, and long-term monitoring. Um, the, different, the main difference uh, in the application of uh, uh, methods like this is that uh, uh, is in the volume of data that are available. Uh, in a short monitoring, we may have a test before in the original configuration and another test in the uh, inspection phase. So we have a, a very limited amount of data, a very limited amount of sample, and there is no way we can find the, sorry, the distribution of the damage feature in, uh, nor in the uh, original configuration, neither in the damage configuration. Uh, if we have a periodical monitor, we may hope uh, to find the distribution of the uh, 
um, of the damage feature in the original configuration, but not uh, in the uh, damage in the inspection phase. Because in the inspection phase, for example, we have uh, when we need a prompt alert after a catastrophic event or even not catastrophic, an earthquake, for example, and we want to know if the structure is safe or not. We don't have the time, of course, to uh, to uh, collect uh, as many information as the one needed to. Um, find the, the, the distribution, probability distribution in the uh, damage configuration. So just we have just a value. And in that case, we have to define a threshold and say, OK, the structure is, da is damaged if the threshold is exceeded. But uh, what is this threshold? How can we fix this threshold? Uh, it would be nice to fix it uh, uh, basing on a cost-benefit uh, uh, analysis, but for m most uh, uh, civil structures, it's not uh, uh, quite easy to uh, have a cost model to fix the threshold. And uh, in our application, we just, uh, we just fixed uh, a, an accepted probability of false alarm, the, which is the, the, the area here. If uh, the, the, damage para the damage feature exceeds this threshold, this means that the probability that uh, uh, we give a false alarm is very, is very low. And we fixed the, 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 the value of the probability of false alarm that we accept. Uh, the case in which we have more data, of course, is the long-term mo term monitoring. We may recover the distribution of, dam of the damage feature, both in the undamaged and in the damaged configuration. We, we can, in this case, we can estimate both the probability of false alarm and the probability of missing alarm. That is the probability that we don't give an alarm and the structure is damaged. And we, in that case, we can fix the threshold as a, as a trade-off between the two values of the, um, of the probability. Uh, so very quickly, we applied this um, method uh, on a lot of numerical models uh, because, as uh, was just said, uh, there are not many data available on uh, really damaged structures. But also on a really damaged structure, this is the uh, bridge in Italy, the Donia Bridge. Uh, which was uh, artificially damaged with, uh, with the pro progressive, uh, progressively uh, with increasing severity uh, by cutting the slab, as you can see here, cutting the slab uh, in a at the beginning at half of this section, then all these sections, and so on. And uh, here are these, the results of the application. And the vibration tests was, uh, were carried out in the original configuration and after each damage state. And uh, here you can see the results of the application of this method. The circle, the uh, location is the one of the damage. And uh, the, the bars here are the values of the damage index, uh, the damage parameter. That is the variation of the interpolation error. Uh, for the lower intensity of damage, we, we have uh, some false alarms, uh, uh, but for the higher intensity of damage, the, the localization is uh, uh, quite clear. And uh, in the last, uh, the last damage scenarios, they induced damage also in another section, uh, this section, and also in another section close to the other one. And actually, the, the, um, the damage in the, the method finds the damage uh, in a section at the middle uh, between the two. And uh, also, uh, we try to uh, f we, we applied the method by considering as the original configuration the one with the damage at just one section. And the method was able to find uh, the damage at the other section. So, uh, considering that here we had very few data, we had just the data, uh, one set of data in the original configuration, and one after each test, each uh, uh, damage scenario, it was a very good result. Uh, this is, uh, these are much. Uh, this is another application, but it was carried out on a numerical model of this bridge for which we simulated several uh, damage scenarios. In this case, we considered two damage sections uh, and uh, the method uh, um, uh, works. Uh, here is uh, another application where we assumed, uh, um, assumed <laughs> that uh, there is a permanent monitoring. So we assumed that we can recover. Uh, we assumed because this is a real uh, uh, instrumented structure. It's a, uh, the factor building, which was instrumented by USGS, is uh, densely instrumented. It has uh, four accelerometers per floor at each floor. 
So actually, it is possible to recover the distribution of the damage parameter in the original configuration, but uh, the uh, damage scenarios were all, were all, were all uh, artificially um, um, modeled by a numerical model because <coughs> this building was never damaged. Uh, also, in this case, uh, here, Here you can see uh, the blue bar is the, 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 the real location of damage and these curves represent the, um, the damage parameter. Uh, so the, uh, the method <coughs> finds always uh, the, the damage location uh, even if uh, uh, there is noise uh, in, uh, in the recorded signal. And also this is, a, uh, in this case we uh, investigated the, <coughs> the capability of the method to um, well, not to detect, but to follow the severity of damage. Uh, and we found that uh, actually the damage parameter increase with the severity of damage. So there is certainly a link between the two, but at the moment it's not possible from the value of the damage parameter to recover, to recover the values of the uh, loss of stiffness. Uh, so the wish list, yesterday someone proposed to, to, <laughs> to propose a wish list uh, and uh, I, I borrowed, immediately borrowed the idea because uh, I like it very much. So the, the, the first is actually not a wish but a, a dream I think now because uh, what uh, I, w uh, I think is really needed for all this uh, uh, method of damage detection and this was uh, uh, just said uh, by Gert. Uh, our data. A lot of data recorded on real uh, damage structures because otherwise we will uh, continue to uh, check our models on uh, our methods on numerical models and uh, usually they, they, they work very well. Uh, they always work very well. The difficult thing is to, um, to let them work uh, with, uh, real, uh, with real um, structures. So the dream uh, is uh, to have a a living lab, a structure. Uh, of course, this is not a dream for this cost, uh, but can be uh, an idea for uh, future networking. Yesterday, uh, Dr. Wenzel was saying, uh, we are here, we can propose something like that. Uh, a structure, a structure that we can monitor with uh, any sensor we like. Uh, we can ask uh, uh, producers of sensors if they want to install their sensors. I think they will be interested because they can check the performance of the, their instruments on a real structure and, uh, and will be okay, uh, really a treasure for, uh, for researchers to check their, uh, their models. I'm uh, almost finished. Uh, then uh, mm, another wish uh, would be a cost model to define the threshold because one of the problem of the, the to, to define to say okay the structural damage one of the, the ingredient the main ingredient is the threshold uh, which the, mm, has to come out from a cost benefit analysis and then the last thing uh, yesterday the uh, the value uh, was defined as the difference between the life cycle cycle benefits but this uh, requires uh, that we can model the structural performance and this uh, for uh, uh, structures subjected to fatigue may be uh, possible, difficult but possible. But for, uh, if I think to a masonry structure subjected to an earthquake, uh, uh, these are really, really difficult uh, uh, things to do. So I think this will be one of the main problems to uh, assess the value of uh, uh, structural monitoring for this kind of structure. Thank you. Okay.